He was the merchant of death, the little finger of World War I. He was Basilis Zaharoff. It's not a name you usually hear when discussing World War I, mainly because he wasn't a general, nor a politician, nor a soldier commemorated for some great act of bravery. He was, well, a merchant. And what did he sell? Well, weapons. Because as long as there are two men left on this great earth, someone will want someone else dead. Our story starts with young Basilis dropping out of school. His father had died, and now, well, he had to work to pay the well, the bills. He worked in, well, what can only be called a brothel for a while, as well as an arsonist for the fire department. Fun fact, back in that time, the fire department used to hire arsonists to burn down buildings so that they could come in and put out the fires for commission. He worked after that for his uncle for a while, but when his uncle refused to pay him, he took the money and left. Uh, he left to Greece, in which he mingled with high society, and they quite liked him because apparently he was a charming and intelligent fellow. But eventually the news of his embezzlement reached Greece, so he ran. And where, per se, would he run? Ireland. But nothing that important happened in Ireland. Then he ran to Louisiana. But there's fuck all in Louisiana. So he made his way up to New York. Well, in New York, he, w he married a rich heiress. From her father worked in the stock exchange. But there was one problem. He hadn't yet divorced his first wife. Oh, by the way, he had a wife. I skipped over that. She wasn't important. Anyways, so when people found out, he was banished from high society. And he, and he well, left. And he did nothing for a few years. But eventually, someone recognized this poor man's talent. A Swedish arms company found found him and employed him as a salesman where as a lawyer where he went to Greece and as a loyal patriot offered to sell them submarines. Nope, the submarines were completely useless and didn't even float, but he managed to convince the Greeks to buy one. Then he went to the Ottomans and as a loyal patriot informed them that the Greeks had some submarines. So the Ottomans bought some to counter them. Then he went over to the Russians and informed them as a loyal patriot that the Ottomans now had submarines. And they bought some. It's fucking brilliant. Good job, Basilis. I give you a hand. That's me clapping. You can't hear it. It's a voice recording. He would continue selling his wares quite successfully to the point where if you were fighting a war, a war like in the, if you were fighting in the Boer War or in the Russo-Japanese War, you were shooting a gun that he had sold to your government. He was a very successful arms dealer is what I'm trying to say. He then made his way over to Spain and through a sexual relationship with a married woman in the Spanish court, managed to convince the higher-ups in Spain to cut him into the deal. Now every arms transaction going into Spain, he would get 10% of. Then some business stuff happened that I don't have time to elaborate on. Eh. The, and then World War I breaks out. But you would think, oh, this is an arms dealer's dream. Nope. And when everyone's busy killing each other, it doesn't take much salesmanship to sell a gun, now does it? So, he resolved to fuck off to Britain. That is what he did. And he married that woman who he was in a sexual relationship with before. Then, the central powers came to him and were like, hey, can you get the Greeks on our side? And he said, give me a million and a half pounds and you shall have the Greeks on your side. They gave him a million and a half pounds and the Greeks were on their side. So long story short, 
This guy was fucking awesome.